All right, ready, let's get started. It is History 1302. We're on a new chapter today, the New Industrial Order, which is really the Gilded Age. If you look at like more traditional textbooks, they'll usually call this the Gilded Age, okay? But this is a chapter all about the transformation of America from a mostly rural society of farmers to a mostly urban society of factories and factory workers. Let me explain, okay? If you looked at American history up until about the 1890s, okay, most Americans lived in very small towns or out in the country, okay? They did not live in large urban areas. Most Americans were farmers, okay? In fact, that was like basically the number one most common occupation. But by the time we get to the year 1900, 1920, more Americans live in large urban centers than don't. And more and more Americans are no longer working in farms, but working in urban jobs like in factories, okay? This transformation is often called the Industrial Revolution. And it's also known as the Gilded Age, and we'll get into what that means in just a moment, hopefully. But this is a massive, massive period of change in American history. Like the whole country transforms. Yes. What's the difference between a farmer and a man? Okay, so a farm is for vegetables. A rancher is animals. Okay. So ranching is so ranching is like agricultural production with animals. Farms is agricultural production for like plants. That's my understanding. Wow. It's so. a good question. No. Yes, no. Okay. Was it was I settling a dispute from another class or something? No, no. Okay. We're just right. How did she not know that? It's a good question. Know. It's a good question. And like those are things that you know people are not gonna find. A ranch so now the Gilded Age is also known as the but the thing is, is people will often say like, I'm a farmer and they have like cows. Like that's, that's not, don't tell, don't tell them that they're wrong. Okay. Like, oh, do it. like it's not, <laughs> it's not like a rule. But anyways, <laughs> this period of time is defined by the innovation and change in America. 1870 and 1914, we see brand new technologies transform American lifestyle from the bottom to the top, every part of life. And even people living outside of the city are affected by the changes that happen within the city. And so what I want to talk to you about is this idea of something called the Gilded Age. Let me see if I have a picture of the Gilded Age. No, let's go. Back. Okay. Let's talk about this idea of the Gilded Age. Okay. This is a period of time where Americans become extremely productive. This is a period of time where America as a nation becomes extremely wealthy, okay? There are, for the first time, large number of people becoming millionaires, okay? They have millions of dollars. There's large numbers of people living in opulent homes, building, you know, palaces in America. There are people building these massive monuments to industry, okay, where, Goods are transformed from raw materials into finished products that are far more valuable, okay? And many people refer to this era as the Gilded Age. Now, does anyone know what the word gilded means? Gold. Gold is part of the name, but it's not just gold. Gold is part of it. Gilded means gold covered, okay? The metaphor that I like to use for the Gilded Age, and you might find this a little inappropriate, so it's a gold covered turd, okay? It's something beautiful on the outside. It looks nice and shiny on the outside, but on the inside, it's not so nice. Look at this, this golden poop. Yeah, I love this golden poop. Okay, it's one of my favorite object lessons. It looks so nice and beautiful and pretty on the outside, but on the inside, it's ugly. <laughs> Why am I last to see? Oh my! On the inside is ugly here. Trevor. 
This nice little, this nice little building, so impressive. Today. But when you look at it closer and closer, when you upon closer inspection, it doesn't look so nice. Okay, you know when you drive to like the city of Dallas. Okay, you're driving on I-30, you pass through Rockwall, you pass through Mesquite, and you see on the horizon on a clear day the skyline. You see those big buildings. You know, and it's really pretty. A city from far away is really pretty. A factory from far away is very impressive. It looks really neat. Oh, look, skyscrapers. That's so cool. But then when you get inside the city, it's not so cool. Okay? You start to see the dirt. You start to see the grime. You start to see the trash. You start to see the people that don't look so friendly. Okay? And you get into the middle of the city, and it's gross. Okay? When you get inside, it doesn't seem so nice. When you look at the Gilded Age from a long range perspective, it is a good period of time in history, which is kind of weird to say the word good, like, oh, it's a great time to live, okay? But if you look at like from the perspective of the United States, the Gilded Age is when we put on our big boy pants, okay? This is whenever we start really competing with the rest of the world. Our economy explodes. It grows dramatically. The amount of resources we have increases. The productivity increases. The size of our population increases. The amount of food that we produce, the amount of finished goods we produce, the amount of railroads that we build, the new technologies that we get, the growth of our power of our military. It is very, very impressive, okay? If you just look at the numbers, the Gilded Age is like our growth spurt, okay? But when you look at it up close, like when you look at a factory up close, you start to see that it's not as nice as it might appear, okay? All right? There's kind of, you know, there's some trash. There's some smoke. This doesn't look like a nice place to live or a nice place to stay, okay? It may seem golden on the outside, but on the inside, it might not look so nice, okay? So, What's going on in America during the Gilded Age? We need to talk about some inventions. One of the themes of this class is the idea of the transformative power of technology. Technology has changed your life, okay? And when we talk about technology, we're not just talking about computers, okay? When we talk about technology, it's any tool that humans use to make their lives easier, okay? And as these tools become more complex, People become more productive. Life becomes a little bit more efficient and you start to have more and more things, okay? One of the most important technologies of the Industrial Revolution is the Bessemer process. The Bessemer process is a way to make steel stronger and lighter than ever before, okay? Steel is a metal alloy. It's a mixture of different types of metals, okay? It is stronger and lighter than iron by itself or brass by itself, okay? All right? Steel is like a combination of several different metals. And when you put them together, you can actually get something. And you put it together in the right process, you can get a very light but strong material that is useful for building things such as a skyscraper, okay? Buildings, for example, during this time period, you start to see skyscrapers. Buildings couldn't be built, you know, in bricks more than like three or four or five stories tall. It started to get really, really difficult because a brick building, it's heavy, okay? And so you have to make kind of like a pyramid shape so that it doesn't collapse upon itself when you get higher and higher and higher in a building. Wood, not, that, not as strong, and it can also get really heavy. But steel is able to be used to build skyscrapers that go, you know, hundreds of stories tall, blow the tallest buildings out of the water all across the country. And it's done in a way that's pretty cheap, okay? Cheaper 
stronger, lighter steel is brought to America through the Bessemer process, but we actually had to kind of steal the Bessemer process. You see, it was invented in England, an American industrialist covertly stole the plans to make their own Bessemer process to convert large quantities of iron into stronger, more durable steel, okay, back in the 1850s. By the late 1870s, the price of steel had dropped by more than half, and steel's tracks soon carried most rail traffic. Steel girders replaced old cast iron building frames. Steel cables supported new suspension bridges. And basically, America is built with steel. Our railroads that transport things across the country are made with steel. Our buildings are made with steel. Our factories are made with steel. Our bridges are made with steel. It basically takes over. And we still use steel to this day. Steel use steel. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, this, the industry of creating steel also created changes in America as well, okay? In order to make steel, you have to have factories. Okay, those factories require labor. When people have to work in the factory, they have to have a place to live. And so you see cities being built around the steel industry and cities grow in the steel industry. The steel industry needs resources. And this leads to an increase in mining across the country. Okay, mining for the iron ore and the things that you need to be able to make steel. This increases the railroad industry to carry steel and to carry those raw materials elsewhere. And then steel is used to build railroads themselves, okay? So there is a cycle of growth that happens as the steel industry is stimulated. Now this does some damage to our environment. You start to have lots and lots of mines and lots and lots of industrial runoff getting into like rivers and streams and things like that. But this drives a transformation across the country. A large portion of the steel industry is in the Northeast, okay? States like Pennsylvania become very, very involved in the steel industry, particularly Western Pennsylvania or in like the Appalachian Mountains where you got like lots of mining ability to happen in a place called Pittsburgh, okay? So it might make sense if you think about it, the Pittsburgh, their football team, their mascot is the Steelers, not because they, they steal things, well, maybe they do, but it's because they have this history of working in the steel factories, okay? You got to be tough to work in a steel factory, okay, or, or iron ore, to take iron ore and turn it into steel. You can look at some pictures in the textbook and look it up yourself. It's tough work. It's hot. It's loud. It, you're moving heavy machinery around. You got to be a tough guy to work in a steel plant. Okay, and so a steel refinery, and that's kind of, I guess, like the reputation, like, you know, let's be tough, our football team will call ourselves the Steelers. Okay. Another major invention that transforms America during this time period is electricity. Now, people don't invent electricity. Electricity exists, okay? It's like a form of energy or whatever. Uh, you know, you see lightning bolts, they've got electricity. But people learn how to master electricity during this time period, okay? Right, you've probably heard, you know, the story of Benjamin Franklin flying a sky with a key on it. He discovers electricity or whatever. Yeah, that's great, but that doesn't really is not useful for things. But during the years after the Civil War, we see more and more scientific research in the area of electricity and figuring out that it can be used for all sorts of things. Electricity is essentially a difference in charge, okay? If you've ever had a magnet, you know that there's positive and negative charges to different things, okay? When you have a positive charge, you've got a bunch of, I believe a negative charge, you have a bunch of uh, electrons. Or whatever. I mean, you can ask Mr. Spencer which one is which. I remember it confused me because it, it like seems opposite, but your atoms have protons and electrons, right? And those are opposite charged and they're attracted to each other. Okay, whenever an atom or a molecule has a bunch of electrons and they have too many, they are ready to like jump over and find protons in another molecule, right? Okay, so that natural tendency of electrons and protons to find each other can create positive and negative charges. You've probably noticed this if you've ever walked, you know, with socks on a carpet floor and then you like touch somebody else and you have like a little shock or you touch a piece of metal. That's because you've got like too many electrons 
And so you touch something that doesn't have enough electrons and they all jump over it. Okay, and that jump, when they jump, you see a little shock and that's electricity, okay? People discover how to harness this and to charge these things up. And it creates a way to store energy without having to like say have coal, okay? Storing energy is important. Storing energy through electricity is a radical transformation in society. It allows for us to do things that we can't do elsewhere, okay? One of the most important ones is light, okay? Electric lights become more and more common as you get closer and closer to the year 1900, okay? It's in the 18, like I think it's 1880 that Thomas Edison, we have this patent of his for the light bulb. We'll talk about Thomas Edison here in a minute, a little bit. But Thomas Edison, he invents the, uh, the light bulb of, it is 1880. Anyways, his light bulb is used to illuminate things without any need for gas or for a lamp, okay? This light bulb changes the country. And this like almost always on the star test, okay? Usually on the star test, there's some question about Thomas Edison and the light bulb. And the answer is it allowed workers to work longer hours because that's just almost always what's on the star test. Anyways, what goes on with the light bulb is that it allows for you to see at night. It allows for you to see in the dark. And this allows for factories to stay open round the clock, okay? Round the clock, not just in the daytime, not just, not just when they have available natural light and not with, you know, smelly or dangerous oil or gas lamps, but rather with bright electric lights, you can stay open all the time. And this leads to people literally changing their whole lifestyle, becoming like nocturnal, working the night shift, something that people normally don't do. Okay. Now, a lot of this comes from the fact when we start to see electricity, we also start to see more regular power consumption and regular power usage. Okay. Factories tended to be limited before electricity, they tended to be limited to places near water because they would need water to power, like a push a water wheel and to power all the machines within, within the factory. And we've talked about mills before in last semester's class, I believe, okay? But with electricity, you can power an engine anytime you want to, and it never has to stop, okay? And so we become much more efficient. We start to use things to save labor. Electricity is used to save labor in lots of different areas, of life, and eventually it's used to power all kinds of things, from powering things for cooking, powering things for cleaning, powering things for just regular, ordinary living life, even for entertainment. Thomas Edison is an inventor of the of this time period of the Gilded Age, and he is very, very prolific. And it's partially because he starts his own invention factory, okay? During this time period of the Industrial Revolution, there's all these people inventing stuff. There's just like a flurry of invention, okay? Kind of like how today there's lots of people like developing like technology for like cell phones and computers and like developers for apps and stuff like that. There's lots of these new things that just kind of pop up all the time. It's like every year there's something new. Think about that, but like with inventions of their time, like with electricity. Electricity is this new exciting thing, and people are trying to figure out new and different ways to use it, okay? People had already been using electricity to send telegraph messages, but then there's this guy named Alexander Graham Bell. He invents a way to use electricity to transmit the human voice through the telephone. Thomas Edison, he uses electricity to do all kinds of crazy stuff, okay? Thomas Edison, he invents like, you know, the first, um, he invents, someone, he invents like the first phonograph, like the first thing for like recording sound. He invents like the first thing for recording video. He creates one of the first video cameras, all right? He creates all these different inventions. And a lot of them are actually not invented by him, but he has like this factory where he hired smart people to work for him and his workers, his engineers, they would like crank out inventions around the clock. Then he put his name on it because he owned the company and they like signed contracts to say, all right, you get the credit for our inventions. He's kind of crazy in that way. But Thomas Edison is very brilliant and he invents a lot of new and interesting technologies. One of these is the light bulb 
And one of these is a way of transmitting electricity called direct current, okay? Thomas Edison, that's Thomas Edison. He is all about this way of transmitting electricity called direct current, okay? Or DC. But he's not the only person, this is Thomas Edison. He's not the only person to be inventing things with electricity. This guy on the right is Nikola Tesla, okay? Nikola Tesla, he is, he's from Europe. I believe he's like from Moldova. He was like an immigrant from, or was he Serbian? It's not in the book. Nikola Tesla is an immigrant from Europe and he was fascinated with electricity as a young man. Now Thomas Edison, he's like a businessman first, inventor second. He's always trying to invent stuff and make money off of it, okay? And one thing that makes inventing a profitable business is patents. Okay? Listen. OMG. Wait, wait, wait. Doesn't that guy look like Dylan Shoemaker? Who? Wait, DS. DS, we mean. DS. Dylan Shoemaker. Are we not allowed to do this? I mean, let's talk, let's talk about Nikola Tesla. Okay? okay. And Thomas Edison. One thing that makes, one thing that makes, um, elect or all of these inventions happen is the government supports inventions with a patent system okay patents are grants like basically they're licenses from the government that say that your invention only you made it everyone else who tries to make this invention has to pay you a fee or a royalty fee because it is your intellectual property right it's kind of like how you copyright stuff like you make a movie people can't just like you know make a recording of your movie and then sell it for you, sell it, sell it making money instead of giving it to you. Copyright and patents are very similar, but patents are more for inventions. Let me go back and actually show you that this is a patent, okay? So what you do is you invent something, you draw up the plans, you send it to the US government, you say, I did this first. And if the government says, yes, you've got the patents, anyone else who makes a light bulb has to pay Thomas Edison a fee, okay? So, Thomas Edison made a lot of money as an inventor because he would invent all these different things and he'd have his workers invent all these different things. He could patent everything and then he could make a lot of money off of the patents that he had or that he could sell. He could sell the rights to inventions to others, et cetera. He was a businessman, okay? He was an inventor. He was a smart guy, but he was also a businessman. But Thomas Edison's biggest rival in the electricity business was Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was not very business savvy, okay? He does not have the big invention factory, but he was brilliant. Yes, you have a question? So the Tesla company is named after him, okay? So I'll get the Elon Musk. He is an inventor and an entrepreneur today, okay? He's got, he made PayPal. He's got the SpaceX Corporation that's like, you know, when trying to, they actually use their rockets now to like go to the space station. Um, Elon Musk also has like this company where they're like digging transportation tunnels underground in America. He does a lot of different things. But one of Elon Musk's business ventures is electric cars. He has named his car company after Nikola Tesla in honor and reverence to Nikola Tesla because of the brilliant things he did with electricity. Nikola Tesla figured out a better way to transfer electricity. One of the difficult things about electricity is shipping it, okay? Because you've got to be able to control it and send it somewhere without like electrocuting people in, in a way that's useful. Thomas Edison's style of doing it was called direct current, okay? And it's easier to explain direct current after I explain alternating current. But basically, direct current is electricity goes one way from the source to the stopping point. Okay, and so direct current electricity, you tended to have to have really big, heavy cables to transfer electricity directly one direction, and you had to have short distances. So when he started setting up his power plants to power people's light bulbs in their homes, he had to have like power plants like every few blocks. Okay, like it couldn't go very far. It could go like maybe a mile or two. It couldn't go very far. Okay, so it wasn't the most efficient. You actually see direct current today in batteries. We use it all the time, okay? Direct current is in batteries. It's in like welders and different things. And it's actually very useful for specific purposes, but it's not really good for transferring electricity over a long distance. 
And it's not really good for any engines that run off electricity. The problem with electric engines is that there's this thing called friction, okay? And friction, when things rub against each other, it creates heat and you can like set things on fire, okay? Nikola Tesla invents the first working electrical engine that doesn't like blow itself up, okay? Because it uses magnets and so they don't have to touch each other, like the different parts of the engine and they don't never have to actually touch so there's no actual friction. But anyways, Nikola Tesla invents this thing called alternate, alternating current. And so instead of the electricity going on one way trip from source to end, it actually goes back and forth, 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 alternating on the same line. Now, I don't understand everything about it because I'm a history teacher and it's complicated. But essentially, the way alternating current works, you can send a electricity for hundreds and hundreds of miles on an alternating current wire. And then you can power small electrical engines or even big electrical engines using alternating current, and it's never really a problem, okay? Direct current is better if you have a lot of electricity. Like you want to put like 100 volts, just like boom, or I don't even know the numbers. But if you want to use a lot of electricity in a short distance, direct current is your guy. But if you want to use alternating current, like that's good for long distances. Okay, most of our modern day power outlets are AC outlets. This is alternating current. We use alternating. If you see like wires, it's alternating current. Okay, you see batteries, it's usually direct current. Anyways, but see today we just use them interchangeably. Back then, these were like competing companies. Okay, like Microsoft and Apple, how they say, oh, you should have a, a, a Samsung phone or you should have an Apple phone, you know, like they're competing companies. There was like Edison's DC electric company and Nikola Tesla's AC electric company, and they like competed for people's business. And so you had to like pick and it was like the current wars. And it actually got really, really nasty. Okay. They were really, really mean to each other. Okay. Nikola Tesla invented all kinds of crazy things. He invented like maybe a death ray, maybe an earthquake machine maker. He did a lot of crazy stuff. He's really brilliant. But, uh, but his biggest invention is AC electricity. And he worked together. Nikola Tesla worked with this guy named George Westinghouse, and they made an electric company that um, eventually gets mixed together with like Thomas Edison's company. Anyways, eventually they get like GE, General Electric. But Thomas Edison has his electric light company. George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla have their own electric company and they get into like arguments. They like putting out newspaper pamphlets that say like our electricity is better than his electricity. His electricity sucks. Use our electricity. Okay. And it was cutthroat. Thomas Edison tried to prove that AC electricity was dangerous and would kill people. Okay. And so he invented the electric chair to prove that AC electricity was dangerous. Okay. Which then people used to execute. Okay, Thomas Edison does some pretty mean things with the electric, uh, with electricity to like prove that AC electricity is dangerous because he wants people to use his electricity. And so I'm about to show you something that actually happened. Okay. Now, this is a little disturbing. Okay. If you're not a fan of um, death, you may not want to watch this. Oh, that's Edison's. Well, that's the fun one. Okay. This is the scary one. So Thomas Edison. Oh, maybe inappropriate. I understand. It was, now listen, Thomas Edison, he invented the very first like movie camera. It was called the kinetoscope. And so he actually started his own movie business. And one of the movies that he made was to prove that, top, that Nikola Tesla's electricity sucked, which it didn't, but it was like his propaganda and he kills an elephant, okay? So this is an elephant. Get this over here. All right, so if you don't wanna watch this, you don't have to, but like this, Thomas Edison does this to like prove that electricity, that, that Nikola Tesla's type of electricity is dangerous. Like that was his argument. He's like, don't buy his electricity, buy my electricity, it's safer. But it's electricity. It's dangerous. If you electrocute yourself, you're probably going to die. So anyways, if you, you may want to close your eyes if you don't want to see this happen, but anyways, so 
It's gonna happen here in a second. Yeah, Thomas Edison did that. And so like, cause it burns. That's, yeah, he died. They killed the elephant. Anyways, so Thomas Edison, not the nicest guy, um, but we actually do use his electricity even today. And we use, and a lot of things that we have today, Thomas Edison and his people invented. He has benefited your life, okay? Your life has been better because of him. Did you know that Thomas Edison accidentally invented a tattoo machine? Kind of. He wanted to invent a machine that could be used to replicate like written stuff, like a printer, an early version of a printer. He created this pen that reciprocated. And so the pen would just like poke lots of tiny little holes as you moved it across the paper. And then the idea is you would use that piece of paper with tiny holes as a stencil. You put that down another piece of paper, you'd slash ink over it, and then you make a copy of something. That was like an early version of a printer. Anyways, that didn't really ever catch on, but somebody used it to make tattoos because they're like, yes. They use like, they like made like a reciprocating tattoo gun using the same technology that Tom says invented. He invented a lot of crazy stuff. But one thing that he invented that you've probably benefited from is videos. He invented, he invented some of the very first equipment to record sound. And he also invented some of the very first equipment to record movies. So these are some of the very first movies that were ever made ever, okay? 1894 to 1896, Edison's Connectic Scope Films, okay? Kinetoscope. These are a little different. Well, get a little smooch going on. They're whispering sweet nothings to each other. Let's get the mustache out of the way. So they didn't have color film. So what he would do to get this effect is you would put like a lens over the projector. You put like a, like a reddish lens over the projector and it kind of make everything red. Or you could like, you know, like put a little yellow, put a little blue, a little, you know, he, this is like, he's trying to get these different effects to get color. Uh, yeah. Serpentine dances. You know, they just had to like, they had this movie camera. They're like, well, let's make some movies, I guess. There we go. Watch out, ladies. <laughs> His body shaming him. What are they doing? Comic boxing. Oh. Um. <laughs> but yeah, Thomas Edison invented a lot of stuff. Like, you know, you've got video cameras on your phones. Well, Thomas Edison also invented his own type of phone. Oh, yeah. Now, have you ever said the word, have you ever said the word hello? Thomas Edison was the guy who kind of, he didn't come up with the word hello, but people didn't used to greet each other with hello. When they were inventing telephones, right at the beginning, Alexander Graham Bell came out with the first telephone. Thomas Edison had his own version of the telephone that came out very shortly thereafter. Alexander Graham Bell wanted people when they picked up the telephone to say ahoy. So like he like gave people instructions to say ahoy when you, when you answer the phone. But Thomas Edison he was like, no, we should say hello. And hello was like an archaic greeting that people didn't say all the time. Hello caught on. Even though Alexander Graham Bell, his telephone company won, it like in court, the right to make telephones. 
You say hello partially because of Thomas Edison. But Nikola Tesla, he invented a lot of ways to transmit electricity. He was working on a way to transmit electricity without wires before he died. And he even had like a way to like, he didn't have like wires in his home and he could like get light bulbs to light up by sending electricity through the air. And like Nikola Tesla had this plan for like electricity to be shared throughout the whole world without ever having any wires. He made like this thing called the Tesla coil, which if you look it up, it's like this machine that just sends electricity all across the place. Pretty interesting stuff. So anyways, these are some early, early movies. Fun stuff. Are you ready? Oh wait, here, here we go. Uh, here's a, they're feeding the doves. Here's a pillow fight. The first pillow fight on television. Anyways, so Alexander, uh, Nick, Nikola Tesla, he's a very innovative inventor. His electricity eventually becomes more popular than Thomas Edison, but we still use both of their stuff even today. So the Tesla company that makes electric cars is named after Nikola Tesla because he made the first electric motor and Tesla cars run off of electric motors. All right. Y'all have a great day. Do good things. Be good people. Make good choices.